Hey, welcome to Get to Know Me, and I'm here with Chantal Twee. <laughs> hey, Chantal. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself before we begin? Yeah, um, I'm an actress. I'm currently on a CW show called Black Lightning. I'm from Montreal, and I live in Los Angeles. How is your experience on Black Lightning going? It's been great. It's been, it's been this is our fourth season. You know, I've gone to know the cast and like new, new cast coming in. Um, Atlanta's been a great city to be shooting in. Even through the quarantine, you know, Atlanta has great restaurants to order from. Yeah, I didn't like how the show ended yesterday. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just act. So, you know. <laughs> It's just my job. Sometimes <laughs> the writing is like shocking and sometimes it, you know, it's exactly what you want. But I think, you know, that's, I think that's the process of writing drama too. You don't get what you want until maybe the end. Yeah. That's why a lot of people binge watch now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I need to see what happens. <laughs> and then it's like four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, one more episode. Yeah, you'll, you'll skip the whole season and wait till it's out all out. <laughs> Okay, so my first question for you is, what's the most unusual thing you've ever eaten? Oh, let's talk about food. Um, well, I'm on a whole 30 right now, so I've just been dreaming of like very regular food, but I guess, I mean, whole thick loaf, you know? Okay. In, in the egg. <laughs> the, fetus, the egg fetus is probably for, you know, other people, the, the strangest thing, but we grew up eating that. Yeah. As a Vietnamese household, like, you know, was, that was sort of something that we, we had as a snack. Okay. Nothing that you consider weird though? Like, I mean, I'm pretty adventurous with food, so I, I can't. Let me come back. Let me think about it. And if it, something pops up, okay. I'll, I'll jump in and say, it. but as of now, I mean, durian used to be a strange food for me, but now I love it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What's the most embarrassed you've ever felt? Embarrassment? Yeah. The most embarrassed you've ever felt in life? Well, I once was at a party and maybe I was a little drunk or something. And, and like, I was yelling, you know, I was like, this girl was being mean. And then, like, I was like, maybe said something, like, you know, like back at her. And then, you know, I'm like, fuck this. And I'm like, turned around and tried to walk out the door, walk out the back door. But then they're like, I just walked into a glass wall. <laughs> like, I just didn't know. <laughs> the door oh. was closed. Hmm. Maybe something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That might be the worst. What did you want to be when you were younger? Um, I, I used to want to be a teacher. My I, one of my aunts growing up was um was a kindergarten teacher and she was always like playing with us and and doing arts and craft with us and I always wanted to be like her. Okay. So yeah, like a kindergarten teacher. Yeah, see, I wanted to be a teacher too. Really? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be a science teacher. Oh, yeah, I failed science. So, so really, Do you want that science? That was my favorite subject, always. Really? I had yeah. to get tutored. <laughs> school at school. Wow, that's awesome. Which of the five senses is your strongest and why? Which what? Five senses? Mm, probably visual. I, I grew up like painting and drawing a lot. So I'd say like that first and foremost, I'd be a visual, visual person but also kinetic. I remembered I could never stay still in, in class. And so I had to like get up every half hour or something and like leave, go to the bathroom, just find some excuse to move a little bit. So maybe kinetic too. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, my turkey rocking. I can't sit still either. <laughs> the restless leg syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather trade intelligence for looks or looks for intelligence? I would keep intelligence for sure. I think 
you know, I, I, I've been studying Buddhism for a couple of years now and, and my Tibetan teacher always has me contemplate on death and impermanence. Mm-hmm. And I think as a society, we, we don't think about that very much. Yeah. But it's just a part of life like that we all will experience. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've had some difficult losses in my life. And during that t- those time periods, I've always had a really hard time um, coming to grips with like the experience of losing a loved one and and how that computes with like you know what your what your life means you know yeah and and as I've been studying with my teacher um, it's helped me to at least come a little bit closer to my own um, peace with that truth about life Uh, and i think you know as an actor and living in and being in this industry it's hard too because youth is so prized and good looks is so prized and i think we're blessed with having an able body and 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 you know our our youth but that's not permanent and so at least our intelligence can develop into knowledge can develop into wisdom and something that we can that can bring uh, more inner peace and longer happiness i tell people intelligence will take you further than looks will yeah and sometimes it, it takes like a little a little bit of learning like life life lessons and to to understand that more deeply yeah if you can go back in time and change one thing what would it be I guess I had, when I was growing up, I I had a difficult experience with my dad. Like he, you know, they were boat people and they came to Montreal when they were very young, like early 20s. And he, he had left his family to join my mom's and they weren't even married yet. They were just dating. But my mom had given him an ultimatum, like, if you don't come with me, I'm going to stay in Vietnam too. And he's like, oh, I can't let that happen. So he left with her. Um, but back then, you, you know, after you left, you couldn't come back in. Yeah. There was very little communication allowed between you know, people who left um, and, and, you know, their families back home. And so when they got to Montreal, you know, they're obviously without means and they had to start from scratch. So, you know, dad worked at, dad made his way into like working through KFC and like putting himself through school again. And like, finally, I think it was after 18 years that he made enough money and we were born. So he, we were a little older so he could leave yeah. to go back to see his family. Um, and when he came back, you know, he left for like, I think eight months back to Vietnam and when he came back, I, he was different, like he was cold and he lost the warmth and, and I didn't recognize him anymore as my dad. And I was like, what's going on? And, you know, I, I kind of cut off my connection with him for many years until I think I was like 16 and I was like feeling a little bit more rebellious. And I'm like, I'm gonna talk to my dad about this. like you know, we hadn't really been speaking for that entire, you know, for many years. And I felt really uncomfortable around him. And then I was like, dad, like you went to Vietnam and you changed and I don't feel comfortable around you. You know, like Vietnamese parents, you expect to slap or something like that, <laughs> right? Like, oh, they don't, they don't let you talk to them like that. But surprisingly, my dad, he didn't, he didn't slap me. He was just like, yeah, well, when I, when I went back, I saw my, my parents, you know, he hadn't seen them in 18 years and they had gray hair, you know, they're, they aged 20 years and he's like, it, it, you know, he's, he's traumatized. And that was the first time I understood my dad and all of the feelings, every, like my love for him, just like, came back just because I understood him, you know, Mm. 
just because I now I, I had access to having some compassion for his experience. And that's like probably the biggest life lesson I've ever learned. Okay. Like that importance of like communication and understanding someone else and like what they've gone through. But yeah, I think those few, those couple of years of like not speaking to him and probably are, are years that I, I regret the most. Okay. Who would you want to play you in a movie about your life? Man, I mean, I think when when that time comes, there's going to be a batch of amazing new Vietnamese actors coming up. In the surge, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited to see who that will be, and you know, if, if, if just in the hopes that there's going to be like a new, you know, new more more Asian actresses yeah. in our future. Hey, maybe you can do it yourself, huh? <laughs> That'd be weird. <laughs> What's one thing you'll never do again? Um, I mean, there's a lot, right? <laughs> I feel like my sister and I used to fight a lot we're very close in age and like she and I would just either yell at each other or fist fight or, you know, like fight. And I think now we're, we're all older and we realize like, oh, I only have like, you know, I only have these, this family. I only have these people to call my sister, my sisters and I think I would never go back to, yeah, escalating to that level or taking things so personally, um, taking family for granted, I guess. Yeah, I understand. I feel like me and my brother fighting all the time made us closer to the point we is now. <laughs> what? I said, I feel like me and my brother used to fight all the time, but now we're closer than we ever been, so I guess yeah. it's home. Yeah, same. And it's like now, she, you know, my sisters are some of my best friends, and it's like, wow, it's like one eighty. But <laughs> they know you're the best too, right? Yeah. They know how you know. They know what buttons to push, but. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what three things do you think about mostly throughout the day? Food. <laughs> Food. Um, like I have a to-do list and stuff I want to get done and and like you can start a beach body thing <laughs> that I haven't started yet um and yeah just like my family or my friends or you know making sure I stay engaged with others through the quarantine because it's really easy to just end up you know staying at home while playing video games or not connecting with the world <laughs> yeah and my final question for you is where do you see yourself in the next five years um i think in the next five years and i have such a great experience with working on tv productions and in theater but i think doing film would be a next thing that i would love to do I feel like it's a nice mixture of the experience of working on on sets but then yeah. also um, having the time and rehearsal period potentially and sh you know of of a theater and also telling my own uh, Vietnamese stories and contributing through storytelling in that way so like writing and producing do you have any certain type of film you would want to possibly create? Yeah, I've mentioned this in the past and it's something I'm still working on and I'm make, making headways, but um, it's um, I, I got the, the rights to a Quebec uh, Vietnamese book that I want to adapt into a screenplay and, and have it like about a Vietnamese uh, immigrant 
story, but like kind of set in Montreal. So it would be in English, French, and Vietnamese. Okay. What I grew up in. So kind of telling that Vietnamese Quebec experience, Vietnamese Canadian experience. Okay. It's exciting for me. That'll be fun. So anything you want to promote or anything you have coming up soon? Um, I think just for now we've got, you know, season um, season four of Black Lightning has started to air. Uh, we just had our third episode yesterday. Nope. So that's something to look out for um, Mondays at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, so 8 Central. Yeah. Your social media so everybody can follow you? Yeah, it's my name. <laughs> My name put together, but Twitter is with an underscore in between. Yeah, and I'm gonna put the link to your accounts in the um, bio too. Yeah, it's great meeting you. My great meeting you too. I appreciate you for doing the show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Keep in touch. Okay, will do. Have a good day. Okay, bye.